Greetings everybody, I'm Daniel Cox from Natural Exposures TV with another episode of Photo Tips from the Field. And today I want to share with you five tips for those of you who are going to Churchill, Manitoba to photograph polar bears off of those great big tundra buggies. And it's in fact one of the reasons I brought my little polar bear friend along to help explain these five tips I want to share with you so that you come home with beautiful polar bear pictures. Tip number one, you got to watch your histogram. So if you're not familiar with the histogram, make sure that before you get to Churchill, you've looked at your manual and you've figured out how to turn your histogram on. It's one of the beautiful things about working with mirrorless cameras is that we can visualize our exposure before we take the picture. Histograms represent all the tones from absolute black on the left to absolute white on the right. I call them the goalposts. And you want to make sure that all the tones in the picture fall within the two goalposts. What you'll be mostly concerned about when working with polar bears is to make sure that your highlights, which are on the right side, which are the lightest tones in the photograph, don't go climbing up the right hand side of the histogram. If you start to see information which is a spike of color going up the right hand side of the goalpost of your histogram, it means that those details are no longer showing and so you'll have whites that have no details in them. That's the beauty of a histogram is that you can adjust it and by doing that you'll have beautiful details in the snows and yet your snow will still be white. So when photographing polar bears you typically want to adjust plus two thirds to one stop exposure compensation on the plus side, meaning that it'll open up your exposure from that white snow so you get beautiful white tones that have detail in them and the snow is white, not gray. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is you want to use a telephoto lens when photographing from these buggies. The buggies are about 15 feet off the ground where you'll be standing inside and the buggies are used to keep everybody safe as well as the polar bears. By being this far off the ground, it's important to use at least a 300 millimeter telephoto lens. Now in this situation, I've got the new Olympus 150 to 400. This lens extends out to 400 millimeters on the Micro Four Thirds cameras, it becomes 800 millimeters. And that helps cut down the angle when you're shooting out at a distance so that it basically looks like you're dropping in elevation from the 15 feet that you'd be shooting from to much closer. So a telephoto lens is imperative and I suggest at least a 300 millimeter. Tip number three is it's always good to have a solid foundation and in this situation I'm using a bean bag on the side of my door here. Now these bean bags are very helpful for working from a tundra buggy. So you can put these on the side of the buggy on the back deck or you can put them on the window inside the buggy. And this gives you the ability to rest your lens on that bean bag to give you a much more solid foundation. I typically don't use bean bags much anymore because of the image stabilization in our cameras today. If you're not comfortable hand holding your cameras, bean bags are the only way to go. We don't allow tripods on the buggies. They're just too cumbersome, take up too much room. People trip over them and have a difficult time with them. Tip number four is to walk slowly across the floor of the buggies. And the reason for it is the buggies are up on great big monster tires that are really soft and bouncy. And when you're moving like this across the buggy, you're shaking everybody. So just kind of glide and walk slowly as you go across the floor of the buggy going from, let's say, front to back. And that's really important because you'll mess up other people's pictures. If you're doing this, or you're walking around or bouncing around, you're destroying people's ability to get good sharp pictures. So tip number five is making sure that the autofocus box is on something that's contrasty enough to get good autofocus. Now when you're working with a light subject on light snow, a lot of times you can have issues with the autofocus sensor grabbing something that has enough detail to get focused properly. And if you have trouble getting an autofocus lock, you want to be able to move your autofocus sensor onto something contrasty. Now I'm gonna move my autofocus sensor over to the snow and you can watch and you can see that the camera is not grabbing focus. But if I move it over to the bear himself, it does grab focus pretty easily. Now that's not always the case. It depends on the tone of the bear and how light that bear might be. And so if I'm having trouble focusing on the fur of the bear, I will move my autofocus sensor over to the nose area where you've got that contrast between the white animal and his black nose. And you can see that the camera picks that up just beautifully. So that's tip number five as far as getting your autofocus sensor in place so that you can get a good sharp image when you focus on the bear. So there you have it, another episode of Photo Tips from the Field. Kind of a specific one about photographing polar bears, but really the histogram that we talk about in this video relates to all photographic situations when you're photographing in snow or in areas where you have light tones. 
So if you like this video, do me a favor and subscribe, and I appreciate you joining me for another Photo Tips from the Field.